Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Larry and Amy's kitchen. Well today we're going to make uh, I think a meatloaf and we're going to make it a little bit differently than we have in the past. This was something I've seen online and I thought I'd give it a try and uh, we'll see how it turns out. I have no idea if this is going to work right or not but let's give it a try. It's going to be called cheesy meatloaf and the ingredients call for one pound of lean hamburger we've got a pound of uh, ground chuck here and it calls for one pound of ground pork I didn't have any ground pork but we had just the other day cooked a pork loin and I had part of it left over so I went ahead and cut it up real fine and we're going to mix it in with the hamburger uh, I'm sure it's not going to hurt anything it also calls for some breadcrumbs, some onion soup mix, a couple of well-beaten eggs, a little bit of water, pepper, and some mozzarella cheese. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is open up our hamburger here and put it in the bottom of the bowl so we can mix everything up. And then we're going to take our one pound of pork pieces I'll call it instead of ground pork the next time if we make this I'll probably try and remember to get some at the store but the good thing about these recipes is you can make them your own by adding or subtracting any ingredients that you want to now I'm going to throw a little pepper in here that is something that you don't have to worry too much about. You can always add more pepper at the uh, after it's cooked. And speaking of cooking, I've got the oven set on 350. It's preheating right now as we speak. All right, I'm going to now take a packet of this onion recipe mix. I'm just going to dump everything into this bowl at one time, with the exception of the cheese. Oh, that smells nice. I don't know about you, but I love onions in my food. And then we need about a, uh, a cup and a half of breadcrumbs. I'm not going to worry about measuring them. We're just going to, you have a rough idea of how much a cup is. We're just going to mix some in there like that. Uh, we're going to take our two well-beaten eggs, throw them in there. and then three quarters of a cup of water now we're ready to get down and dirty make sure your hands are washed well which I'm sure most of you do uh, before you start cooking I'm going to get some spray out of the cabinet before I do that because my hands are going to be a mess when I get done because I'm going to spray this bowl a little bit with some canola oil just in case it may have a tendency to want to stick all right now we're going to get in here and we're going to start mixing and I think the key to this is to make sure that you mix it all very well so this may take me a minute if you got young kids that like to help you in the kitchen <laughs> this would be something that I'm sure they would enjoy doing running there making sure their hands are clean of course letting them run their hands through this and squeeze it all together like I said I think this is the most important part putting all the ingredients in the bowl and then making sure that you've got it mixed up very well the first thing I notice about this with the two eggs and a three-quarter cup of water because it's a little bit moist but then again as you can see if I wanted to I could still shape it like a meatloaf now the key to this is not to shape it like this right now let me rinse my hands To, uh, or this, one of the secrets to this meatloaf 
is that we're going to take half of this meatloaf mixture and put it in the pan first. I'm going to spray a little bit of canola oil right here. I don't think it'll stick, but you never know. So I'm going to take about half of this, or I'm going to attempt to. I'm going to put it right here in the middle, maybe a little bit more. And we're going to shape it like a meatloaf a little bit. I'm going to kind of take the center of it and hollow it out a little bit, and you'll see why in just a minute. It ain't got to be pretty, it just got to taste good. So, now we're going to fill the middle of that meatloaf with mozzarella cheese. So I've got me a, a 8 ounce package of mozzarella cheese. I'm going to use, oh probably 3 fourths of it if I can. Right here in the middle, we're going to sprinkle it full. And I know those of you that are watching this and you like meatloaf and you like cheese, I can guarantee you your mouth is already starting to water because you already know what this is going to probably turn out to taste like. Um, you can't get enough cheese as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to load this baby down. And then One more scoop, and that should do it for right now. We're going to take the rest of this meatloaf mixture, and we're going to plop it right on top of our cheese, like that. We're just going to shape it to all together. Like I said, I've got the oven preheating. There you go, you hear the, the buzzer now telling me that it is at the right temperature. I'm going to leave that just about like that. Like I said, it ain't got to be the prettiest thing in the world. It's just how it tastes that matters because you're going to cut it anyway when uh, it's cooked. So, let me move this out of the way. Use my hands a little bit. And we're going to take this and put it in the oven for one hour. Now, right before the hour is up, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this since we don't have the capability of editing right now and, and uh, we have to do this in two parts. Right before the hour is up, I'm going to take the rest of this mozzarella cheese and I'm going to sprinkle it all over the top of this let it stay in the oven for another say 10 minutes and we'll see what it looks like when it's done so let's pop her into the oven and it is now ready to cook for about one hour all right um, we will come back for part two of this video once it's been an hour, I'll take it out of the oven so I can show you what it looks like and uh, we'll go over the ingredients one more time to let you know and uh, see what you think. Alrighty, we'll see you in part two.